the curlew. What does it mean then to sing, to venture a note upon the air? To feel your body and your mouth resound with this resonance of flesh and mind and heart. To sing, to really sing, requires both complete focus and a searing commitment to being present within the passing moment. To be responsive to its signals and open to its commands. That the voice might somehow channel something. Something raw and elemental, something true, something from the gut, and in doing so, begin to tell a tiny fragment of the story. The story of how it feels deep down to be a part of this vibrant, sonorous world, to be tied by blood and breath to every living thing, to be wind blown and alive. If I were to describe the curlew, should I describe the bird that I see, the dainty stepper, the keeper of wind-ruffled silences? Or should I describe the bird that I hear, the haunting sound that issues forth when that great bill opens, a song that seems to split in mid-air and take the heart in two directions at once, a transcendent beam which, as it rises, also sends down a great taproot into the deepest shadows of the land's memory. What kind of nation would allow such an ancient magic as the curlew to be marginalized and destroyed? If we are to turn the quickening tide, then we must shake the white noise from our heads and attune ourselves once more to the curlew's plaintive cries. These birds are kindred spirits, and these words are small acknowledgement of the debt of one singer to another. An unsung land is a dead land.